Hello everyone and welcome back to White Moon Racing. This is the first part of a video dedicated to the complete elaboration of a Vespa Large Frame 200 engine with the legendary Bombardone, the M244. Today we'll see the tuning of the gearbox transmission, clutch included, and will modify the crankshaft to better adapt it to the needs of the thermal group. I will also show you the preparation that must be made on the crankcase to accommodate the new components, namely uh, the crankshaft and the thermal group. In fact, we should bow the crankcase on the flywheel side to house the shaft shoulder, which is larger in diameter than that of the crank chamber. And then we'll have to apply putty on the base uh, to be able to connect the transfer ports in uh, the best way. And let's start with the primary ratio. This is the clutch that also houses the pinion. And this is the quadruple of the four gears, the cluster, on which the primary with straight teeth has already been mounted. Let's start with the clutch and I'll tell you what are the precautions to make it work with this very high torque thermal unit. Let's start with the clutch. So, as I told you, the primary is a DRT, specifically the ratio will be 2462 Arcobaleno gearbox, quadruple from 21 and 4th to, uh, to 36 feet teeth, that of the 125. The clutch will use its reinforced Neufren which at quality price ratio is truly an excellent product uh, since it, it solves all the problems uh, associated with this type of use uh, in an excellent and cheap way. In other words, the possible detachment of the pegs that hold the springs uh, and through eight welding points that bind the internal basket uh, to the internal bushing uh, uh, where the spring holder slides. And so this problem has been solved. The other problem, namely the opening of the basket, has been solved by means of a reinforcement ring. Furthermore, the fillets on the discs, I don't know if you can see on camera, are induction hardened, hardened so that the bell won't erode. This is an, an item that costs around 120, 120 euros, but it's worth all the money it costs, costs. It solves many problems that the clutches of large frame Vespas have, especially 6 and 5 springs. For this engine, I've chosen to mount a 9-plate clutch produced by Salflex, which will, which will be able to keep the engine torque at bay without using excessive lyrics for reinforced springs. Above all, there are only 8 springs, so even putting the hardest ones on the market, as will do. Uh, the clutch is never very hard, as the 7 springs with Malosi springs can be. We remove the old springs and we take the new ones, the new ones are the XXXL, 3 axes. This is a tested configuration in the sense that the uh, clutch does not slip uh, and it's fine. The best of these are always remaining in the 8 spring, springs area and for now the best we tested is that of Crimax, uh, the CM CMX. It costs a little, a little but it's worth the money it costs, especially for, a, for pushed engines. It's very, um, for fast engines, it's very good because it's uh, a light clutch um, so it also, it's also possible to mount a little lighter flywheels uh, to the benefit of the operation and the stress of the shaft engine that comes to shrink. Okay, let's open the package with discs. Here they are. They are nine discs produced, produced by Surfax, a specific kit for this clutch. Here they are. So we here we have yeah all the discs, but you have to reuse the first disc, the one supplied, because it is not there. You see, there are cork, cork discs, which are five, and then there are four thinner discs than um, thin, four thinner discs than these steel ones. Uh, but one is missing, which is the starting one. Uh, this one, the first one that has smaller, smaller buttonholes and is thicker. So let's put this below. Discs should be greased when you mount them. The thing of leaving them to soak in oil 
Well, we did some tests, but we did not find substantial differences. Neither, neither during uh, the op during operations or either in terms of durability. Very important because when these hard springs are used, a reinforced ring must also be used so as not to risk that the standard one may then skip. This one here is produced by BGM. Here, the old way. Now I'll center it a little. The ring is in place now. We release it. Actually, before we, we uh, before loosening, uh, let's do a test and see if it flows. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, and the clutch is ready. Let's move on to the cluster on which it has it has already been mounted. As I showed you before the primary with straight teeth DRT62. This tool is excellent and necessary to do a simpler job but also better done because this plate tightens the two small plates and then through these holes it is possible to press the nails perfectly. So with the help of the sad and lonely track as Claudio Villa said we start to close these nails. Okay, here we are. Now, we remove the plate and check if the nails have been pressed well. Okay, here we go. The nails have been pressed in correctly, but there are points that have remained more raised, like this one, for example. This needs to be fixed. So, to fix it, we'll use a chisel with a, a large tip. always a flat one and let's refine this operation is mostly for scruple because it was fine as it was before however now the primary is arranged and we are ready to grapple with the chain with the which concludes the transmission department what I want to point out this gear, listen carefully, has a tremendous game. This is bad, very bad, because there is a risk that the gears may skip. Although this gearbox is of the best type produced by Piaggio, that is the one with the flat gear selector. For safety, it must be fixed anyway. I also have uh, oversized shims. So we disassemble it to replace the fourth gear and put one with an extra tooth from 35 which is that of the PX200 to that of 36 which is that of the PX125. Let's remove the whole package here. Obviously since we also have to replace the gear selector let's dismantle it as well. 
I would say that it needs it. It's, um, it's a bit ugly. The gear selector, obviously, I make this clarification even if it's not necessary, is unscrewed in reverse. So we screw to unscrew. Let's remove the old gear selector and we deselect in its place. A droplet of thread locker. So unscrewing it, we screw it. Okay, perfect. So it's 36, perfect. Let's put the fourth and all the others. Then we put this on and see how much space there is, if it's actually needed, if you really need the increased one. Let's see if, it's, if this is enough or if something more is needed. Yeah, this reduces it quite a bit, but it will still take one plus a, plus a couple of tenths. Let's take it. Okay, so the gearbox runs. We're okay. We're ready to move on to the crankcases before taking them to rectification. Why rectification? Because the flywheel side shoulder of the crankshaft, this one, is too big to fit into the crankcase. It won't fit. In fact, this is 97.7 in diameter. Yeah, 97.7. While the crank chamber is ninety six point five in diameter, so we would have to bore this one here to a measurement between ninety eight point two and ninety eight point five to be sure that one that one does not touch anywhere. The part to be reinforced of this crankcase, but only to have a large base so connect so to connect the transfer well without the risk of going outside the frame is here. I have already prepared the surface improving its tendency with a chuck making these small holes and now i'll take the resin and apply it and as regards these processes we are done this is precisely the perfect use of resin not what i'm doing i i, I don't want to praise myself but i mean the way the resin works that is by compression this this one smashed in the middle here can go anywhere. So that's exactly what the resin is for.
I'd say we're there. The excess is good, is better to remove it now because then when it's hardened it will be much more difficult to remove it. Here it is. Let's remove this surplus. Perfect, okay. No. Now we've done this. Let's bring the crankcases to the rectification to get it fixed. We conclude the video by talking about the crankshaft and the changes to be made. As we already shown you on a live stream as well on the photos on Facebook, these three has a very limited phase on delay and quite a push on the advance even if in my opinion the greater advance it has compared to a stock shaft is primarily meant to improve the lubrification of the connecting road but this is just my, my thought what to do we're going to cut a little bit we're actually going to file it on the delay precisely this way we remove this edge look like this something like that small but necessary this makes a big difference especially at the top obviously then to balance it on the other side always with the reed disc we'll file a little here in this area like this and we're going to cut some stuff here okay to work we worked our crankshaft just as I told you, that is cutting, filing on the on the side. So the diagonally a little bit to balance. I've removed some material on this side. Don't be fooled by the fact that I or even Francesco well, we work by eye, that is, we go cut just like that, because the references we have are the results of several years of experience and tests, which allow us to do this quite easily. But if you are a beginner, please first measure and then cut. 100 measures, one cut. This should be your motto. So. Let's put this here and see how it fits. Let's see if it, it's at 12 o'clock. Just a little more on this side. To put it right at 12 o'clock. It's important the shaft does not fall, fall forward. Put on either on the bearings or on the knives, because otherwise the engine could vibrate, especially with such large, large displacement. So let's deepen a little bit and into this cut, this filing we made. We still remove some material here in this area. So I have not explained it, but it is, it is obvious, obvious. When you do these operations, I recommend to rub the connecting rod well, because especially if you work with discs of this type, such as reed, paper, the material that covers this paper is corundum, therefore it's very hard, 9 on the hardness scale. So, if the uh, residues go inside uh, the frame, it lasts very little. So, well wrapped it and please wash well. So, I filed this side again to see if we can drop, drop it at 12 o'clock which is where we want let's see I will say this is fine we can be satisfied it's practically 12 o'clock we're done for today in the next video we'll work on the crankcase on the cylinder 
and we'll assemble everything. Bye everyone and see you on the next video. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Remember, White Run Racing is not a workshop, but an amateur sport association that works on engines only for sport purposes and only for its associates.